Hi, Gary Stearman. Welcome to Prophecy Watchers. Pleased to have in studio uh, with me today, Dr. Larry Allison. And welcome to Prophecy Watchers. It's good to be here again, Gary. Uh, Larry has written uh, a number of uh, books, done some DVDs. By the way, not only is he an author, he's written The Paradise of God. He's a lecturer, and we have his lectures on video. Uh, and he, he lectures essentially on the reality of redemption. That is, the entire universe being created by God for a purpose. And the whole magnificent picture that is to be found in the Bible. And you do a great job of conveying this. I just, I love the way you teach. Well, thank you. By the way, he's going to be one of our uh, presenters at the uh, uh, next Prophecy Forum. Of course, that is October 12th through 14th, the second annual Prophecy Forum uh, right here in uh, the Oklahoma City area. And uh, we're glad to have you with us. That's good to be here as always. Hi, Gary Stearman with a very special announcement from Prophecy Watchers. Bob Ulrich, we've got a lot to talk about. We do. It's an exciting time to be alive as the prophecies of the Bible come to pass right before our eyes. Have a big conference coming up October 12th through 14th. We're going to be celebrating the 70th anniversary of Israel at the second annual Blessed Hope Prophecy Forum at the Embassy Suites Hotel in Norman, Oklahoma. October 12th through 14th. You can register for the event at prophecywatchers.com or call us toll free at the phone number on your screen. And Bob, we have the top speakers in the world of Bible prophecy. A conference like no other. 32 speakers. L.A. Marzulli, Bill Salas, Jan Markell, David Reagan, Mark Kitchcock, Terry James, the names just go on and on. 32 speakers in one event. Not much time. You need to register now. Gary Stearman for Prophecy Watchers saying, see you there. Now today, uh, just to introduce you to Larry a bit, we want, we want to talk about uh, a really dark event in, in the distant past. Uh, and I've, I have my uh, Bible open to Ezekiel 28. It's called the Fall of the, of the Prince of Tyrus. Uh, he's called that the King James Bible, mm-hmm. the Prince of Tyrus. And on earth, the Prince of Tyre was a, uh, was a big time, if you will, uh, monetary uh, uh, mogul and a very powerful man. But he had a, if you will, a heavenly counterpart, a very evil man. And what, what do we know about that evil man who lived in the heavens? Well, that evil man was actually a cherub named Lucifer. And uh, he was perfect when he was created. You know, the Bible says he was perfect in all of his ways until iniquity was found in him. And uh, basically he gathered together a rebellion against God. Uh-huh. Uh, one third of the angels in heaven uh, followed him. You know, he, uh, he's a liar. You know, Jesus said in John eight forty four, he's a liar. And this may sound like an oxymoron, but you could almost say he's a very good liar. Ooh. And he would have to be in order to convince one third of the heavenly host to follow him uh, for them to believe that he could somehow overthrow God and become the ruler of all existence. But somehow he convinced them and either he was really smart or they were really stupid but they all followed him and rebelled against God and they were cast down to the earth. Now what's interesting is the Bible tells us that when they were cast down to the earth that Lucifer was cast down before kings. Hmm. And we'll just take a moment for that to soak in. Now this is before Adam and Eve. So he was cast down before kings and the Bible says that the kings even sneered at him. So if there were kings on the earth then there must have been kingdoms. And if there's kingdoms then there's currency and there's borders and all the things that are involved in kingdoms. So the question that's always brought up is who were these kings and who were these kingdoms? Now the Bible also says in another place that Lucifer was involved in trading and commerce with these kings Mm -hmm. and that he uh, didn't trade fairly that there was inequity in his commerce. Of course we know there was iniquity, there was sin found within him. That's uh, the reason he rebelled and 
God cast him out. So the question remains, who, who were these kings? Where were their kingdoms? And uh, what does that have to do with us? <laughs> Yeah, and as we we look back at, at what Isaiah has to say about Lucifer, <clears throat> who had a spectacular fall, and he fell, and people watched him fall. He became kind of an exhibit of mm -hmm. what not to do, if you will. And people watched him and said, can, can somebody so great uh, fall? Like, how, does, how can this happen? Now, now, you hold the position that that fall took place before the creation of, uh, of man. Yes. Yes, it took place before the creation of man. And I, I do want to say clearly that uh, we know that this creation, this civilization that was here on the earth, was not man. It was not mankind. Because we're told very clearly in the Scriptures, and, and the Scriptures are the truth. They are true and truth that uh, Adam was the first man. So if he was the first man, there was not mankind before him. Now this fall that Lucifer uh, encountered, Jesus was talking with his disciples one day and he made this statement, he just inserted this statement in the, into the conversation. He said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Hmm. So it must have been a very dramatic casting out party that was, was there for Lucifer. And when he was cast down to the earth, uh, those that he was cast down in front of him uh, sneered at him. They, they realized that they had been taken by him. Hmm. Now as we put this whole story together we develop a, a character pattern. Mm -hmm. This man called Lucifer or Satan or the devil or whatever you want to call him. He appears again uh, in the, the New Testament to Jesus, mm -hmm. tempting Jesus. And what's always interested me, Larry, is that when he appears to Jesus, Jesus accepts his authority, allows him to make his, his uh, terrible presentation without interrupting him. And, and what Lucifer is doing is offering Jesus the earth. I can give you this whole place to, and you'll be the ruler of the whole place. Uh, so at that point he apparently still had some rights. He still has some power. We know that because the Scripture says that we have been given authority over all the power of the enemy. So for a Christian to read that in the New Testament that we've been given authority over all the power of the enemy. If the enemy had no power, we wouldn't need authority over it. That's so, true. So there is some power that he has, although his power has always been subject to the power of God. Uh, God has never given up his throne. And keep in mind, when Lucifer was talking to Jesus, he's a liar. And there's no truth in him, according to Jesus. Well, let's talk now for a minute about the connection, this giant connection between mm -hmm. the fall of Lucifer and the whole redemptive story. Uh, if, as you're saying, uh, th this incredible collapse took place prior to the creation of man, man then uh, was created, uh, I guess, as a, if you will, a cure to the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a new strain of beings to inhabit planet Earth and to glorify God. And, and, and that was to solve a, a long-standing problem that already existed. Well the problem existed but I think my personal belief is that God down through the eons of time uh, who has an ability that Lucifer does not have and that is to see into the uh, eternity future. How true. He can see into the eternity future and he had a plan for eternity future and that plan was to create a being that he could fellowship with for all eternity hmm. that would have a glorified body. And he put everything into place for this ultimate creation that would be uh, the trophy of his grace in the future. And as he's putting everything into place he creates the heavens and the earth and he creates angels and according to the scripture uh, angels in, in the book of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews, which I believe is Paul by the way, uh, the writer of Hebrews 
said, are they not all ministering spirits sent mm-hmm. forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Well, that's us. That's the church. Yeah. So part of their existence was to minister to the ultimate creation that God was going to create to be with Him for all eternity. In fact, it's recorded in, in Psalms. One of the angels, uh, when they saw this creation taking place, uh, said, who is this man that you are mindful of him? In other words, God, why are you thinking so much about this new creation, mankind? Hmm. So Satan rebelled out of his place. Uh, he was never created to be in the likeness and the image of God. He was never created to be uh, an inheritor of salvation. But he rebelled and for that he got cast down. And from that point on he hated everything God loved. Hmm. And everything that God loved and put into motion, Satan attempted to destroy it. I'm glad you said what you just did. Uh, it has to do with love. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I love to use that word. Uh, first, uh, second, and third John. I love to read yes. the epistles of John because they talk all about love. And in fact he uses the statement a couple of times, God is love. When John writes about love he does it on the authority of having walked with the Lord on earth and he knew absolutely what love was because he had experienced the Mm -hmm. love of Christ personally. But to write those three words, God is love, that is a miracle. Uh, The fact that, that the creator of heaven and earth is characterized as love always boggles my mind. How can such things be? As great as God is, His love is magnified even more in the fact that He sent His Son to die for us. With the magnitude of God in the universe, when we say that God created everything, the reality of everything is almost uncomprehendable. I was watching the uh, NASA channel the other day on on television, and the scientist came on uh, who studied the brain activity of people. And he said there's two things that man can know but he doesn't comprehend. He can know that there's no end to the universe and he can know that there's no end to eternity past. Hmm. He can know that but he can't comprehend it. That's because we have limitations within our physical thinking and our physical bodies. We have limitations. But we serve an unlimited God. So His ways are higher than our ways, yes, but His love is so much greater than we can even comprehend that He would spend all eternity putting a plan together so that we could be with Him. I don't know, when I think of Einstein or Isaac Newton, Mm -hmm. the great mathematicians of the past 500 years, you know, that have tried to figure out the universe and so forth and so on. And they almost get it figured out. And it's all, it's blackboards full of numbers. Things like that that you can't possibly understand. Well I always go back to just three words. God is love. Okay, equation solved. That explains everything. (laughs) Well one of the greatest physicists of all time who is currently living and, and he's on television quite often, he's on a lot of the science channels. Uh, just recently came out with an article and he said it is impossible for the intricacies of this universe to be put together randomly. Mm. There has to be divine creation. And I think we just need to understand that there is an intelligence greater than ours that loves us more than we can comprehend and that all we have to do is receive Him and His Son and we can spend all eternity with Him. Wow. It's almost hard to believe, isn't it? It is, but uh, we try to make it easy to believe because it's the easiest thing in the world to believe if you simply believe that God is love. God is love. There it is. Dr. Larry Allison, thanks for coming by today. Thank you. And I've enjoyed getting to know him on this particular trip. I'll tell you all about him a bit later. I'm Gary Stearman. Hey, you keep watching. We are. 
Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.